you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Christopher Stammer. He's from Volu Interactive. He also has a cool LMS project in the industrial laundry niche, uh, where a training project. It's called Level Up in the Laundry dot com. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me, Chris. Good to be here. <laughs> I'm excited to get into it with you. Um, first, let's just level set on what leveluptthelaundry.com is. Like, what is that? There's, I, I find all these interesting niches within training. So what is this niche here? Oh, yeah. This, this is about as niche as it gets. Okay. Uh, so Level Up in the Laundry is a training portal for a supervisory skills training program that we developed for an, uh, one of the largest industry associations for the commercial laundry industry. It's called TRSA. And uh, we have had a relationship with TRSA for about 13 or 14 years now. And they had identified a need for supervisory skills training for people that work in laundry plants. These are commercial laundry plants. So imagine like you doing laundry in your house, but like multiply that times a thousand. Like and hotels and stuff would use yep. this? Yep. Right. So, so they, they'll do the laundry and the garments for hotels, restaurants, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, if any sort of an industrial uh, like organization where they have like uniforms that they wear that need to be cleaned on a daily basis, they do it. So, so it's the management layer that you're training with the level up the laundry. That's that, right. Um, yeah. Tell us more. Yeah. So it's the frontline supervisors. Okay. Uh, these are the people that are, are walking around these plants and providing assistance to the, the frontline workers who are actually doing the work that are manning these stations and these, uh, these machines and, um, processing the laundry as it moves through these plants. And, uh, as you can imagine, being in a production oriented environment like that is, uh, it's pretty challenging. Um, especially when you're, you're up against, uh, people that have varying levels of education and varying uh, levels of understanding of the English language. So, so the level up in the laundry provides them, uh, supervisory skills training ranging from leadership, communication, decision making, problem solving, uh, root cause analysis, uh, literally runs the gamut. Really what we wanted to do is just give them the, the platform, the starting point, uh, for them to, uh, develop their skills, uh, and to, uh, perform their jobs effectively as supervisors. Nice. And in general, how's it going with the website? The website is going extremely well. And to be honest with you, that was probably one of my biggest concerns when we, um, when we, when we were got into this project about a year ago right now, it was the platform. And it was, it was, first of all, what LMS are we going to use? That's a What's big this? question, right? Yeah. There's like, oh, it's, oh, it's a huge question. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, coming from a situation where I had never, deployed an LMS independently on my own, it, it was literally keep me awake at night sort of an issue. Wow. So what, uh, tell us about like the decision matrix journey through settling on WordPress and ultimately Lifter LMS. So it was a lot of research yeah, and going out and um, finding out all the different solutions that are out there. And my biggest concern was reliability. I wanted to make sure that we didn't launch a couple of courses and then lose everything at some point down the line. Uh, also, set my second priority was, was scalability. I wanted to be able to um, allow the LMS to grow with us. I wanted to be able to grow the course and expand the course and, and have the LMS be able to accommodate that. So the journey was is just going out, doing a lot of research, um, developing some evaluation criteria to figure out which LMS is going to be the best for us, the, the best for the, the, the program and narrowed it down to, to 
two or three. And I, I won't say the names of your competitors, but um, there are some, co- essentially there, there were, there was an option that we were considering that was kind of like a software as a service option where everything was set up. You just kind of plug and play, just kind of put your date, your content in there. And they had all the processing, payment processing and all that sort of stuff set up. And I eliminated it because it wasn't customizable. Mm-hmm. Like it, it wasn't going to have the look and the feel that I wanted for the, for the site to have. Um, and then we looked at another, uh, WordPress based solution and it was the same sort of thing. It was cost and, and this one was cheaper, but I was a little bit concerned about reliability and, and also, uh, functionality too for that one. So we eliminated that and lifter LMS wasn't the cheapest solution that we were considering. But in terms of the capability that it had and the level of support that I knew that you and your team were going to be able to provide us, in the end, it was a no-brainer. And ultimately, we went with, with the, the Infinity Bundle. Awesome. So those are, that's music to my ears. Reliability, customizability, and scalability. That's, that's awesome. I mean, that's what we try to, that's what we aim to do here. That's, that's awesome. So I'm glad you found us. How did you, um, I see a lot of people when they're in research mode, they get a little overwhelmed. Uh, like you mentioned, there's, there's, there's some options in WordPress, but then the greater e-learning industry market's huge. There's a lot of SaaS solutions. You said, how long was that experience of like shopping around and how'd you avoid the overwhelm? I'm overwhelmed every day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and the LMS for this project was just like a piece, right? Of course, it's the foundational piece, but it was just a piece of the overall program. And, and th- then you start talking about all the tools to develop content and that sort of thing. And it's just like, so, um, so essentially, yeah, I was, I was initially pretty overwhelmed because there were so many solutions out there. And then, you know, I started getting smart with my searches and tried to, to look for like top 10. Yeah. Right, top 10 best solutions that are out there yeah. and um, watch some YouTube videos of people that had actually, you know, gone out and experienced trials of these LMSs and, um, and, and like listen, listened and watched these, these videos, these YouTube videos and these, and looked at these reviews with a very critical eye, a very keen eye to see if what that person was looking for was what I was looking for. Sometimes there's a difference. And when they rank these LMSs, their their evaluation isn't in line with yours so you really need to 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 prioritize what you really want out of the lms when you start with your search sometimes you don't know what you don't know but you you learn over time and and you begin to uh to understand what what it is you really want so um yeah so there were just there was just a ton that were out there and um yeah and 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 and, and tried out a few as well you know, tried out a couple of the LMSs that were out there and had the opportunity to experience them a little bit. But if you don't have any content to put in, that can be a little bit challenging as well. So we went to a lot of demo sites and evaluated the demo sites. And um, I think when we came to the Lifter LMS demo site, I was like, okay, I kind of see how this is all going to work together. And I think this is going to work out really well for us. Um, but then I started to see some of the extra functionality that you had built into the Infinity Bundle, like social learning, um, that was huge. The, um, the, the testing and, and the badging functionality of Lifter, that was huge too. And, um, and, and I'm glad we did choose LMS or, uh, Lifter LMS because when I actually started to get into it and use it and start to put content in there, I began, it was like layers of an onion that started mm-hmm. to become unpeeled. And I was like, Oh, it does this. I was like, that's so cool. That's exactly what we need for this. And um, yeah, so now we're off to the races. We're in our second cohort. That's awesome. Well, yeah, the layers of the onion, I appreciate that. I I think that experience comes from the fact that we just build for people like you and that you guys tell us what you want. And it's not, we're not guessing. So like, as like uh, somebody like yourself gets into the tool in the early days, they're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had some community features? Let's gamify this more. Let's, you know, extend in this way or that. So that's <laughs> that makes me super happy to say that or to hear that. How about um, tell us more about the cohort, your cohort model? Like, how does it work for this niche? Like, what are, what are you doing? Like, 
you get yeah just tell me tell us more about the, yeah. the the business model of it so it's all driven the format of the course is totally driven by our users needs right okay. just like just like you had gone out and gathered requirements and heard what your customers wanted uh we had done a pretty comprehensive needs assessment pre-covid okay on people that were plant managers vps of operations general managers of these plants and also people that were supervisors and we said okay if you were to have some sort of a supervisory skills training program, how would it be deployed? Like, how would you want to go through it? Well, going to a hotel for a, a boot camp or a three day weekend or a week long training was not going to work primarily because you just can't pull your supervisors off the plant floor and say, Oh, go to training for three days. Right. Because obviously there is not anybody in the plant to supervise. So they knew that they needed to have something that was remote. Right. They need to have something that could be accessed via the web. But the problem with that is that you lose if it's, if it's totally asynchronous, right? Where you have people just accessing the content at will on demand. That's great. If it's one person wanting to learn these skills and, and you know, develop the capabilities of the niche or whatever it is they're trying to learn. But with this, what we wanted to do, we wanted to do something a little bit more community based. We wanted the people that were going through the training together to be able to, to talk to each other, to be able to communicate with each other, share lessons learned and be able to learn from each other. So that's when we decided that the best approach for the overall training program was going to be distance learning, but had to be a little bit blended with a couple of real time sessions built in where we could bring everybody together and talk about, you know, what we're learning through the program and talk about how to apply the concepts of the program to their actual live environment. Was that virtual, the get people together? Yes. Yes, yeah. it was. Yep. Because so, they can't leave the plant. Like, so it was, yeah, they can't leave the plant. Right. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's virtual, but in real time live. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that was cool. So, but also with the, uh, with the program, we wanted to have applied assignments. We wanted to have what we call action assignments where once you go through a module that consists of several lessons, there's going to be a, 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 an action assignment that they need to take and apply the learned skills in their own unique environment. And we needed to make sure that we're getting that fed back to us in terms of what it is they're actually completing and the results of those assignments. So, you know, you can only do so, you can only handle so many students at one time. So that's one of the reasons why we capped off our seats at 25 for each cohort. Mm. Um, and so you'll register for a cohort and there are a limited number of seats. So you're in a group with 25 and you go through the training program all at the relative same time, theoretically. Fine. Because, because as, as you know, with, with the, the, um, with prerequisites built in and having the capability to, what do you, what do you call it? Like trickle your learning drip. Content with yeah, the drip content. Yeah. <laughs> with the drip content, what we'll do is for each module, we release a new module every Tuesday. It doesn't mean you have to be 100% finished with the content in the previous module. It just means that the next module is going to open up and now you'll have access to it. Um, so some people are falling a little bit further behind uh, others. You know, some people are like, boom, boom, want to get it done as fast as possible and, um, you know, provide us some really good results with the action assignments. Other people are a little bit more lacks in terms of their access to the materials. So, so anyway, so that's the cohort model. Um, we found that it works really well, um, brings people together, helps develop a network. And that's really what we wanted to do. We wanted to create an ecosystem of supervisors that can get to know each other. And as they start to become more involved in industry events through TRSA, which is, you know, this industry association, they're going to be motivated to want to go to some of TR TRSA's other events down the line. That's awesome. I noticed on your pricing for the cohort, you had like a TRSA members only price and then a non -TR TRSA members price. So people just, if they are members, they get the benefit of cheaper pricing, basically. Yeah, that's right. They have the, they have the privilege of, of, of spending less on the yeah. program. And you know, we just want to make sure that we're, we're incentivizing people to become members of the industry association. Um, so that way they can get preferred discounting, not only on this program, but other programs as well. And, and, you know, it's, 
it works to their benefit in the long run because, you know, being involved in a member oriented industry association, there are a lot of benefits. Tell us more about you in terms of like the, um, kind of your niche. And what I mean by that is there's lots of different people that use Lifter LMS and WordPress. Um, there's course creators, there's website builders, web developers, um, uh, curriculum providers. And you, I'm looking at the volume interactive.com website. And you mentioned the e-learning website is just a piece of the stack. So like, what is, what is your, uh, niche in this, in the training world here? Yeah, it's a really great question. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> so, so, well, my company started as, uh, as Voluminant in 2004. <clears throat> All right. And we were, a, we are, I should say, we're kind of same company, just different emphasis, right? We're a business, business performance improvement firm. Okay. So we'll go into organizations and we'll try to improve their operation from a strategic operational, behavioral, or information technology perspective. So our relationship with companies, clients is we'll do a wall-to-wall -wall analysis, identify areas of opportunity, and then create, construct a project around it to improve the operation as a whole. And that model worked for us up until about 2019, um, even before COVID, right? We realized that when we were going in and we were doing these like these laser focused performance improvement programs, 80% of the programs were oriented around training. Okay. Right. It's, it's not, not just about the, the process stuff is, is great, but you know what? Anytime you make a process change or implement any sort of a change within an organization, there's got to be that, that tactical offset. There's that human element. So most of what we were doing was focused on training and we made kind of a pivot in 2019. We said, you know what? Let's, we, we love the training element we, because it has an impact on people and, you know, you're engaging with your audience. Let's just focus our organization on training. So we still do the, the strategic stuff and the business performance improvement stuff and, you know, stuff oriented around project management, enhancing project success. But the bulk majority of what we do is focused on training. So from there, we, we had already developed a whole slew of training programs that were you know, kind of legacy training programs that were either delivered on site, live, in person, or we had some online components of those. And uh, some were kind of like blended up, blended between those two. And um, we said, we said, yeah, we should really just focus on these and start to deploy these programs virtually and, and shift them away from, from there being a live element to where people can just access the content on demand. Um, and that's another reason why I wanted to buy the infinity bundle is the intent was sure, we're going to launch level up in the laundry, but we also have four other programs that we want to get online that can be delivered, um, you know, through Lifter LMS. And that's where we're going. And so you guys are creating the content, not just the website for the training, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And end to end solution. So we'll do the needs assessment, develop the content host, you know, put the content into Lifter. And with, in the case of level up in the laundry, we, um, we actually facilitate it as well and administer the program. Wow. That's, that's awesome. It's very full stack. Yep. For sure. Yep. On your, go ahead. Take, takes, it's very, very time and energy intensive. Uh, it's also one of the reasons why, you know, we're kind of in growth mode right now to get, you know, a new program manager in for level up in the laundry and you know get a couple of associates in as well to support that program and grow it uh, but also to to uh, expand some of our other programs so in this model with level up in the laundry was trsa the client trsa is the client yep yeah and and, and you know and actually the the relationship segue they they initially started as the client and they segued into being kind of a business partner I mean, the, I was wondering the, that because you're very deeply integrated and in helping them improve in some yeah. significant ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it just goes back to the, the ongoing relationship that my company has had with TRSA, you know, over 13 or 14 years and our relationship with the executive team there and also the, you know, the, the office team there. They're just amazing, amazing people. Um, and because of that relationship and the trust that they had in us, Joe Ricci, who is the CEO of TRSA, 
you know, is trust, just trusting Blue Interactive to, to, to kind of take the reins on this program and move it forward and to facilitate, administer it and also to, to, to market it and, and sell it to his industry as well. So it's been, you know, it's, it is, it is a true partnership in every sense of the word. Would you consider TRSA a, an association? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a professional association. Professional association. So like I see. And, and you, you said there's more, um, projects you want to get into. Are those with other associations? No, like, they okay. are. Okay. So the, the association world is, is a tough nut to crack, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I live here in Alexandria, Virginia. It is the association headquarters of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, employee of the United States. Um, and I have worked with, with many of them. And, um, yeah, the associations are tough because first of all, they operate very lean. Okay. Um, especially now, especially recovering from COVID where a lot of their industry events were just, they were cooked, you know, they just did not have them, um, in 2021, sometimes 2020, 2022. And they're still making up for that shortfall. So for them to invest thousands, if not hundreds of thousand dollars uh, in a training program. It, it's a, t it's a, it's a big ask at this point. Um, and also a lot of the associations, they operate lean. Okay. You know, it's, it's like they outsource a lot of their work. Um, and I'm not talking about their training work. They're, they, they, op they outsource like their admin work. Okay. Uh, and their marketing work. So you end up calling one of these associations and they have like three people that work there full time. <laughs> You know, and they outsource everything else in terms of the admin. So, so to go in there and actually pitch a training, pro training project is, is, can be very difficult. We've tried, we tried varying levels of success outside of TRSA. That is, you mentioned on your website, on, on the volume website, industrial, medical, military technology. Is that where you see a lot of opportunity in those? Yeah. Yeah. So, so being here in, in outside of Washington, DC, we have access to a, a huge federal market. Um, and that, that too can be a difficult nut to crack primarily because you're at, you're beholden to federal acquisition guidelines, regulations, um, and the, 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 the contracting process to, to slow win. sales cycle. It right. is a very slow sales cycle. Um, right. actually I was training last week at the state department and we were talking about the procurement process and the acquisitions process. It, it's, it's, it's clunky, it's cumbersome, but it, but it's designed for a reason. It's set up that way for a reason, for fair and open competition for all sorts of vendors, not just the biggest companies and biggest contractors that are out there. Um, so yeah, so those are like the four niches that we really are focused on, um, primarily because the medium that we use as a company is well suited for those industries. So where we're going right now is in a lot of interactive multimedia leveraging 360, leveraging virtual reality, leveraging uh, 3D technology, um, and, and putting people in immersive situations like that virtually, um, where you can, you know, get Google Cardboard, you know, whatever on your phones, and, and leverage some of the apps and some of the programs that we're developing. So like simulations, like virtual reality simulations and things? Exactly, exactly. So it was really, really funny. Just a really quick story. Um, as we were developing level up in the laundry, right? It was like, it was like January, February, and we were still trying to figure out exactly what LMS we were going to use. Yeah. Right. And I think we had made a decision to go with Lifter in like January, early February, something like that. We finally made the decision. <clears throat> and then in March, they had the TRSA board meeting and they wanted me to come in and show them some of the content for this program and stuff like that. I'm like, dude. This content's not developed. I mean, it's one of those situations where, and actually fast forward six months, we had the first cohort running and they're going through module one and two and we're developing module four and five. Right? That's the classic way to do it. I mean, well, it's, it's one, totally classic. Well, it, well, it, you're one step ahead and like you've got the validation, there's a market there and you're moving. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what the first round's like. Exactly. And, and really all we wanted to do with the first cohort is just get to an MVP. Yeah. Right. And once we got to that minimally viable product, we knew that we could expand on that. We just wanted to have a good starting point, wanted a good foundation. So anyway, so I'm, I, I have to stand up and present to this board. And these are like CEOs of like Allsco, Unifirst, 
Cintas, like these big commercial laundry and uniform companies. And I, I don't want to bore you with all the machinations, but I needed something to show them, something that like, I could put meat on the bones, right? Right. So I developed the night before a, simula <laughs> a simulation of walking into a commercial laundry facility and walking around and look, and I had 360 degree video on, on my desktop. So I was like, that's cool. Right. So I had that available to me as a resource to use. So I developed this, this simulation where you could walk in and look around and identify like what we call variances, things that you do not want to have in your plant, like slip, trip and fall hazards, um, garbage cans overfilling, people wearing uh, Uggs instead of like steel toe shoes. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> it enables you. So you go in, you look at the scene and you look around and you click, Oh, I see something. And then, you know, it opens up and you score points and that sort of thing. So I spent like four hours developing this thing. There are three scenes that you go through and I launched it and I was, and I showed it to them at this, at this board meeting. Everybody's wow. Like, Oh, this is what the program is going to be all about. I'm sold. I'm in. <laughs> right. That's awesome. So yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and that was just, that was just kind of like a BS like app that I developed just to kind of show them what could happen and what the program is going to include at some point. I actually did integrate what I developed into the program, but there's, um, but, but that was pretty much the only highly interactive component. There's, there's going to be more of that stuff coming down the line. In sales, I call that a mic drop moment. You just engineered the perfect mic drop moment. That's awesome. Exactly. Well, speaking of the layers of the onion, as an instructional designer yourself, uh, there's like the e-learning website. We've talked about like some virtual plant manager, uh, virtual meetups. Um, you got some simulation in your view, particularly in this B2B business to business, uh, training niche. What's a, what's a stat? Like you've got Lifter LMS and the WordPress website delivering, um, content that drips out. You've got the virtual meetings. You got the simulations. Like what's the perfect training stack for B2B training in your view? Not necessarily brands, but types of things to really make training work online. That's <sighs> a good question. Um, well, I would say the fir first and foremost, the, the, the most important thing is, I mean, you got to get, you got to get people to come in and buy the program. Yeah. You have to get customers. And the only way you're going to get customers is if you're able to merchandise and promote the benefits of the program. Yeah. And that's got to jump out to them on that front page, on that landing page for whatever your program is. If, if, if somebody is looking at that front page and they, they start to scroll down and they don't see what's in it for them or how it's going to benefit their organization, you're lost. They're going to, they're going to abandon the site and they're gone and they may never come back or worse. They may have a conversation with somebody and go, Oh yeah, I looked at that program and yeah, it just doesn't, there's other stuff that's out there. Right. And, and it's really hard for us right for custom developers because we're competing with what's right in front of people's faces every day we're we're competing with like linkedin learning and I, like i've gone through that and i'm like okay right? and people mention it they mentioned it on that needs assessment that we, you know before covid for level up and laundry They're like oh yeah we use that for things and i'm like really i'm like how does that stuff apply to you? It's like, it's like relatively generic. And I, and it, admittedly, I haven't really done a deep dive in LinkedIn Learn. And then there are these other sites that are out there, you know, the ones that, you know, when you're on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, they, they're right there. They're promoting themselves because they've got millions of dollars of venture capital backing them. Um, you know, you're watching YouTube TV and there's, there's an ad for masterclass or something like that. That's who right. you're competing against. Right. That's who you're competing against. So. The advantage is, is that a lot of that stuff is like thousand foot level. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're like us, as somebody who's a custom developer in, and you've got a niche or you've got a talent that you want to sell it, you're like 500 foot level. And in order to merchandise yourself, you have to be able to explain to people what the benefit is going to be for them to invest, you know, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever in your program. Um, and, and you have to be able to do that. So that front page is really, really, really crucial and really important. And, and the ease of conversion, right? Being able to go from looking at that, identifying what the benefit is to buying it easily. That's, that's crucial. Um, so that, that would probably be the most important thing. 
Nice. Um, what are s- some of your favorite things about Lifter LMS? Oh, man. So I would say my favorite part about Lifter LMS is, God, there's so many good things about it. Like literally, like we were talking about it before the interview, there's just like so many things that I didn't know it had the capability to do. So many things that I didn't realize that I needed when I first was going out and looking for an LMS. Uh, I would, you know what, I would say that my favorite thing about it is, and, and some of you, some people that are watching this may not know that this functionality exists. Maybe they don't have access to it because they don't have the infinity bundle. But my favorite thing is, is being able when somebody completes an assignment or a lesson, not only can you automatically, you know, send them a badge, right? Or when you approve their assignment, like for us, people will get an assignment back and if they pass with whatever the threshold is, 90%, 85%, 60%, whatever, we we will hit accept their assignment and then they get a badge sent to them right away. And also on the timeline, the social learning aspect of the site, everybody else sees that they get a badge. Right. That's really cool. But in addition to that, it's the email that you can customize. Right. And that you can send out. And, and it's, it's mail merge, right? I mean, the fields, the, the fields are all in there where, you know, you can, it's all customized. So when people get that email message, they think that you actually put together the email message saying, Hey, great job on putting together, you know, or completing that exercise or, you know, completing the lesson or whatever it was. You know, that's, that's pretty cool. And, and the delay that you can put in there too, where like, you know, you put in a day delay or a two day delay. Um, that's really cool too. Because I mean, and I'm not saying like we want to like bamboozle people and thinking that the message came, came from you and it really didn't like it was automatically generated. Um, it did come from you. Like, you know, that that message is going out to them. Right. Um, but, but having it be able to have, and, and you would probably send a message like that as a facilitator or course instructor, but. If you've got 500 people going through your course, yeah. you've got 20 people going through your course, there's no way you're going to be able to reach out and interact with, with everybody in your, in your class or within your cohort in this case. So having the functionality for that to happen automatically, I think is really, really powerful. So the way that we use it is about halfway through the, the course, which is a three month course, right? Where we actually have a module released every week over the course of 10 weeks. Um, and then there are a couple of weeks where we have off because we have a live webinar uh, about halfway through when they complete that assignment, boom, they get an email message that says, Hey, congratulations. You know, we really appreciate your level of engagement, the time, effort and energy you're putting into the class. Keep up the good work. We're, we're halfway there. And people are just like, oh, they're like, that's so cool. I just got a message, you know, from, from the person that's running the program. So I think that's really powerful. Um, the other thing that I really like is, um, it's just the reporting capabilities. Um, I also like the integration of the payment process, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Stripe and PayPal. That's pretty cool too, because that, that was an area of concern for me. And to just click a couple of buttons, open up a Stripe account. Boom. It's like so easy. Yeah, like you guys have money. Made it. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Of course. I and mean, you guys have made that integration really easy. Um, so, um, but, but yeah, just, yeah, that's the, so those are, those are really, really great great uh, aspects of the program you know, of Lifter. Well, thanks for sharing that. And sure. I just wanted to ask, uh, you've, you've kind of gone into it, but it's really got me intrigued. This idea of if you're a training provider, um, there's, and you're talking to these businesses and there's the LinkedIn learnings and the masterclass and the high level stuff. And it seems like what you're saying is that when you focus and really niche down and get to that 500 foot level, like, oh, I help this specific industry and the content is not generic about business in general. It's like super specific. Um, and the platform I want to deliver that on needs to be flexible, like WordPress is. And like you said, you built an awesome landing page that really sells the benefits and flows right into the LMS and, and your own way unique for that industry i guess what other advice you have for somebody who's wanting to to maybe they're just building websites right now but they're also really into like leadership and management and they want to kind of add this training piece or they're they're trainers and they're wanting to move it online and get into the wordpress uh lms side of things 
Like, tell us more about that sweet spot of, you know, B2B niche training and how somebody can really get into that and why use WordPress versus other options. Yeah. So you, you kind of are wading into a, a really interesting area here, right? Because it's like Word, WordPress. A lot of people feel like WordPress is not a stable platform. Right. And what I realized as a result of, of recently switching hosts to a host that you guys have, I think you have a relationship with them or promoted, um, from another host that was like one of the biggest ones in the country. Yeah. World potentially. Um, you need to make sure that you're with the right host first and foremost. Right. Because, um, even with our other WordPress oriented websites that we've developed, not only for our own company websites, but also portals for some of our other training offerings that we have that we developed. I, I found that the performance of those, those sites was not good because we were using the wrong host. So you really need to use a host that's fast, that's reliable. And also I had, I had, I had a nightmare story or nightmare situation where we moved over to another host that was like known as like the best WordPress hosts in the world. And they were terrible. Mm. Like they, they ended up like the site ended up crashing. Like we just couldn't access it one day. And oh. then I went into the admin panel and I couldn't get into anything. And I got on the customer support, which was, you know, real on the other side of the world. And they blame me. Right. They said, they said, Hey, yeah, you went, somebody went in on your side and erased all these files. And I'm thinking to myself, it wasn't me. And they said, well, they said, well, maybe it was, uh, maybe somebody, uh, you know, penetrated your website and deleted all your files and, and, and everything. I'm thinking to myself, why would somebody do that? Right. This like little niche company organization. Why would somebody do that? But anyway, so we never realized we never were able to figure out what the root cause was. I just bailed. I just said, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to go to with a different host. So finally we're with a host that's really, we love them. And I can't believe how fast it is interacting with Lifter on the back end. Like I can, I can have two versions. I can have Lifter open on two, on two, you know, two, uh, um, which I'm call it tabs, right? right? On Mozilla. And, and I can like make changes to the site on one and I can see, the changes on the other side and it, and like, and it, and it's just reliable and it's fast and it's seamless and it works really well. Knock on wood. Right. Just watch what happens. That. Do you mind sharing who the awesome host is that you're enjoying? Um, yeah. Our host is Hostinger. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yep. And, um, and they're just, they're just really, really good. And I don't know what makes them so good, but I also, I also spent the money on one of the premium plans that has, you know, some of the fastest bandwidth and and the most capacity just because i mean i want to make sure that as we get more students enrolled in this program and in our other programs that we don't lose the data right we want to make sure things are being backed up routinely and we don't lose the data which is really crucial and that was a lesson learned with our last site um so so that that's probably the first consideration um is is just making sure that the backbone and and the platform is solid and good uh the other consideration the, the, and the other consideration using WordPress versus, you know, some other solution that's out there is just, I mean, you, well, first of all, Lifter LMS, you can integrate it with just about any theme, mm -hmm. right? And some, like you guys said, when we were first interacting, when we were getting ready to roll out the, the, the site, some themes are better than others, but it will probably work. Probably it will work with just about any theme that's out there. Right. We haven't tried it with any other themes yet, but like, what are you Amazon, using? What theme yeah. do you like? What's that? What theme do you like? What are you using? Well, we're, we're, I mean, I know, I think we're using Cadence. Cadence. Yeah. It's very popular. Yeah. That's a solid yeah. one. Yeah. I know you guys started to push. There's a new one that just came out. The Sky Pilot is right. one we make. We've always had our own theme, but you know, Cadence is awesome. Astra is huge. We have a lot of Divi people. But like you said, it can work with a lot of different themes, but Cadence yeah. is a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see what we can do with Skypilot, but, but you know how the problem, you know, how, how it is with WordPress themes. Like you, you get to learn one. Yeah. And you get comfortable with it. And then you're like, Oh yeah, you install a new theme and you have to relearn it all, right. all over again, you know? 
Um, so, so what, what I need, we have another site called industrial athlete university, and this mm. one focuses on you know, it's industrial skills training, primarily for logistics and distribution. Like I'm getting ready to, to implement or to, to install lifter on that site, right? In that install. First, I need to migrate everything away from our old host over to Hostinger. So that way I know that this thing actually works. <clears throat> so knowing that you've got a theme that works well with Lifter and because they're all going to work, but knowing that it's going to work seamlessly with Lifter and that the appearance is going to be good is, is another consideration that, that needs to be made. Um, but, but the biggest thing for us with, with, uh, WordPress as a platform and as a starting point for our Lifter LMS is just the scalability. And, and also the price. I mean, you, you know, you, you look at some of these SaaS LMSs that are out there. It's like a car. It is like a car. And, <laughs> and then they start to charge you per, per yeah. trainee. And like one, one, one organization we were talking to, they're like, Oh yeah, it's, it's something like it's only $40 per seat. And I'm thinking to myself, $40 per seat. Are you joking? I'm like, that's right. crazy. I'm like, there's just no way. And so I wanted to make sure that. When we're starting relatively small, that we're not losing our shirt and we can actually get some revenue generating where we can now expand and build from there. Um, so, so yeah, that was, that was the biggest thing. So it's like just scalability and price and just the, 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 the being able to make it so it, it looks how you want it to look and it matches the mission of the program and also matches what your audience expects. Those are key elements. Awesome. And a couple of quick lightning round questions here. Sure. Um, for, for value, what, what's the team size or what are the roles in the company for a company like this to really work? You know, even just building a website, doing sale, like who's, what are the roles here? The roles are the number of people you need. I like the number of people and then like what function, like could one person do this business? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. For like sure. By, by themselves. I, but, I think so. But tell us like where volume's at today, if it's how many. Yeah. People? So, so we have, we have a relatively small team. We've got about five people that work within the company full time. And then we've got a cadre of developers and subcontractors that we use to really focus on, um, some of the, some of the content stuff. Um, yeah. and then as I mentioned to you with, uh, level up in the laundry, we're looking to hire a couple of people to actually facilitate the program and continue to expand on it. Um, sometimes we've got things that we want to do. We want to incorporate into the programs that we just don't have the in-house capability to do and don't have the time to do, in which case we need to outsource it. Um, I know now there's like this movement to outsourcing everything to like, you know, on Guru or Upwork or whatever. There are all these sites that are out there. But the problem with that is now you've got to manage all of these people and you've right. got to wait for the, the jobs to come back and that sort of thing. Um, one of, one of the, most important things for me is to, to get as much work as we possibly can get done here locally. Um, that way we're supporting our economy and I'm also supporting, you know, people that are, you know, coming up through the ranks and are starting to develop their skills and want to expand their skills, kind of like I was 20 years ago. Um, and where the people that are actually doing the work can interface with our customers and can, can go and, and actually have a, a weekly status meeting with, uh, with a customer, you know, down the road here, like in the federal government. So. So to answer your question, um, if, if you've got a really compelling, if you've got compelling subject matter that, and a good message that you want to train, that you think people are going to want to hear, and there is a tangible benefit to it, then sing, a single person can do this. They can. Now there's going to be a learning curve, of course, like with everything, but Lifter makes it easy. I mean, just. Once you get into it and you start using it and you understand how things are structured and how to actually incorporate and integrate, integrate the data into the LMS, it's, it's pretty straightforward and you can create something that's pretty compelling and that's attractive. Um, so, but, but the key is to make sure that you've got, you've got good material. You want to make sure that, you, you know, you know what you're talking about and you're presenting it in a way that makes sense in a way that people understand it and that's appealing to them. And they're able to say, Oh yeah, I get it. I know, I know what's in it for me. I, I know how this is going to benefit me and make me better at doing whatever it is that I do. Um, so, so I would say that for, for us, that's like kind of a growing small business. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in a role now where I'm more of, of a business development person. Like I'm out there 
in having ongoing conversations with current customers to look at more work, look at other programs, um, just through Level Up. I mean, three or four other companies have contacted us and have said, contacted me and said, hey, we want you to actually develop our LMS. We want to help, we want you to develop our internal corporate training um, and 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 you know, integrate these modules into our our own portal. So that's pretty exciting. So I'm kind of like the front man that interacts with people, identifies the requirements, and then I'll work pretty closely, but I'm I want to delegate the actual development of the, the the materials and the program itself to to people underneath me, um, to developers and some of the associates we have working with us. So I mean, it just all depends on where you want to go. The, the problem with hiring more people and, in, and bringing people into your organization and growing your organization is that now you need to manage those people. And management takes time, right? Uh, yeah. The drawback is that if it's just you, and I saw a couple of your case studies that were out there, if it's just you and you've got a really compelling, you've got compelling content, if that's all you're going to do, you better make sure that you've got the revenue to support your lifestyle. Right. Right. Um, um, if, if you're going to be, um, developing multiple training programs, you're, you're, you're going to get stretched thin very, very quickly. And, and then quality suffers or when something goes wrong, you can't troubleshoot as quickly. So it just really depends on, you know, what your mission is and where you see yourself and your organization going, you know, over the next year, five years, 10 years. Can you give us a quick pro tip on how to get clients? You just kind of mentioned it a little bit with like going out and connecting in, in the um, associations and doing active business development. But if somebody wants to get into like finding a client like TRSA or like, how does one do that? Yeah. So I, what I would do is just buy a mailing list and just spam everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what it seems like everybody is doing now? Yeah, right. my email inbox is insane. I mean, the email spam alone is like, yeah, insane. But yeah, tell me about it. And, yeah. and I get hit up probably, I get probably get five or six messages a day from these, these agencies, so called agencies that tell me that they're going to, they're going to book me, you know, five to 10 meetings a month. Appointment setters. Yeah. yeah. Appointment setters. Yeah. yeah. And it's all through email blasts. Yeah. Right. Um, so the, the common, the common, like the zeitgeist lately has been just, just blast emails to people that you think are potential clients. Um, what I found is that I usually sabotage my reputation doing that. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's more of an annoyance than anything else. And I think right now people see through the, the, the merges and you know, in the emails themselves and their names being in the subject lines. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that that's, I think th those days have passed. Now you see a lot more people moving to social media, to Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, um, Facebook to a certain extent. Um, you see people marketing through there with varying levels of success. And, you know, the, the catch here is this, is that it really just depends on the segment that you're going after, right? People in the commercial laundry industry and the people that we're targeting who are like plant managers and general managers of plants, Guess what? They ain't on Instagram, right? right? They're not out there promoting themselves and then, you know, putting pictures online, you know, every day. I mean, it's kind of essentially the best way to reach those people is the old fashioned way is picking up the phone and calling them. Yeah. And thankfully we have, at least in this case, we have an industry association that has, you know, a database of all of these people. And I have not asked TRSA or the, the, CEO of TRSA, Joe, for that information. When we go out and we do outbound marketing, I call these people. I, I, I have a, a serve, not a service. I've got a access to, you know, an online resource where I can find what those companies are based off of their NICS codes or the SIC codes. And I see them pop up. I pick and I pick up the phone and I call and I say, Hey, listen, you know, this is what we've developed. This is what it does. These are the, there's some of the results we've been able to accomplish. Even, you know, in our second cohort, you know, how interested would you be in selling and sending somebody to the training program? And then like you had mentioned in one of your training courses, like, it's like, if they're new, I wouldn't expect for them to pay full, full price the first time they go through it. You can offer an incentive, offering them a, an incentive through couponing or, you know, promo codes 
via Lifter LNS, which is awesome. Another cool functionality because we made pretty heavy use of it when we first launched the program. Say, so I tell you what, for this first run, we'll give you 20% off or we'll, we'll do a two for send two people. We'll, we'll only charge you for one. I just want you to experience the program, experience the benefits of the program. And then once you get them, they're like, this was, this is, if you got a really compelling product, they're like, this is really cool. Yeah. I want to send more people to the program. Um, so, so that's probably, but, but if you got some sort of a product, some sort of a solution or training program that appeals to a wider audience, um, then, then you can leverage other tools like, like Instagram and Twitter and, you know, do the, the outbound blast emails and that sort of thing. Um, we just choose not to do it just because we're usually going after niche companies and organizations. That's awesome. Well, thank you for that, Chris. I know we're up on time. I want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing your, your journey into building up level up in the laundry dot com and what you're up to at Volu as a, uh, as a training provider. It's such a cool story. Um, you have my respect and admiration for all that you've done, not just in building the website, but doing the sales, doing the B2B, creating the training, uh, yourself and helping other companies grow. Part of what makes me excited and keeps me in this niche is, you know, we create a tool that then other people use to send out like this positive impact in the world. And in the B2B context, also help people make more money and create jobs and all that stuff. It's, it's really awesome. So any final words for the people and, uh, go check out level up in the laundry.com and volu interactive or volu interactive.com. Any, any final words, Chris? No, I, all I can say is thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you to you and to Will and the entire Lifter LMS team. You've created a really great program. And just as an aside, I was not paid to say any of this, anybody. <laughs> um, you've created a really great application and, um, platform for, for, for learning. And, uh, literally we wouldn't be where we are with this second cohort if, if it weren't for, for you and, um, and this, this fantastic application. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Awesome, Chris. Well, we'll have to check in down the road and maybe do another one of these in a year or two. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely more to come. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. Did you enjoy that episode? Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.